So our brackets can be mounted on either the shafts or the coupling. Uh, what we're trying to do is to make the shafts collinear during operation. And so whether we're mounted on the coupling, and this is the movable element of the coupling, uh, or on the shafts, uh, then that's uh, perfectly all right. So we've got our <coughs> main components are the laser that you've got there, uh, a receiver, and in this case the receiver's got a Bluetooth module, uh, so uh, it's a wireless communication, and uh, then our computer. So we'll just turn on a few things here. Okay, with our laser, to start with, when we turn it on, it's bright and then it goes dim. So what we're trying to do is to get it on the detector plane here for starters. I'll just turn this just a little bit <coughs> so you can just sort of see there. So when we first turn the laser on, uh, it's bright. Uh, and then that's just to allow us to do the, uh, the centering there as best we can, and then it'll go dim after that. And when it goes dim, it's in the measuring mode. So the first step is always to just shoot at the cap. And so now it's in the measuring mode there. And what I'm going to do is turn the Bluetooth on. <coughs> We've got the Bluetooth. Equally, we could use a, a, a cable connection uh, between the uh, receiver and the computer if we so desire. Yeah, just to it. So what we're going to do is just scroll up to here to hit shaft alignment, enter. Uh, some couple of machines here. We can edit those to make that a pump, a compressor, a turbine, whatever and then our uh, uh, right hand in a few dimensions here just so this can do some trigonometric calculations. So the first dimension that we need to put in is the distance from the coupling to the receiver. So that's a little line there just in line with the post that I'm going to measure from and so go to that coupling face uh, there Actually, put it that coupling face there, be a little easier. That's about 80 millimeters. Eight, zero. Diameter of the coupling is the next thing that we need to do, and that's sort of <coughs> set at 100 millimeters as the default. Um, we can leave it at the default unless we're doing some comparison with vendor specific data, like with high-speed turbines and compressors. The next dimension is from the uh, coupling to the front foot of the machine to be moved. And that is about 150. And then uh, the next dimension is the dimensions between the uh, two feet of the machine, which is 100 millimeters. Uh, it says all the dimensions have been entered. Would you like to go to the measurement screen? So the main sort of keys here are those three there. There's uh, DIM for dimensions, uh, M for measurement, and the RES is for results. And so then those three keys are common to all of the products in the proof technic uh, range. We've got an enter key, uh, and uh, then we've got uh, uh, a go back uh, key wherever we want. So our next uh, thing would be to press M for measure and you can see it's initializing the uh, uh, Bluetooth or searching for the Bluetooth and uh, we've got a red dot there at the edge of the screen just to explain a little bit more about what we have here, we've got a, uh, a laser that's reasonably dumb. Uh, we've got uh, two detector planes located in our receiver, and optically they're 150 millimeters apart. In reality, they're of course really tucked in there, but optically they're 150 millimeters apart. 
So the laser is going to hit somewhere on detector plane 1 and somewhere on detector plane 2 and uh, then based on that when we rotate the shafts it's going to work out both the offset uh, and the angularity of the shafts. So I'll just go to menu and go down to XY view and this is just a, a tool for uh, centering the laser. And so there you can see where we're hitting on detector plane 1 and detector plane 2. That's like a perspective drawing of the, of the two there. And so what we need to do is to find a little thumb screw and to move that across. Okay. And we're just trying to get it reasonably zeroed. Uh, having it zeroed has nothing to do with the accuracy. It's just that there is likely to be some angularity present with the machine. And so what we're trying to do is just stay on the detector plane as uh, much as we can. Okay, so we're all uh, zeroed and ready to go. And just uh, again initializing the Bluetooth. Okay. So we're ready to go. The message at the bottom there says uh, rotate the shaft to start uh, or press the enter. So basically uh, the inclinometer is live on this. We said we've got the two detector planes. We also have an electronic inclinometer and that knows what the angle is to a tenth of a degree. So with uh, this particular uh, tool we can start anywhere and we can stop anywhere. Uh, and it'll just, when it starts uh, uh, getting some new data from the inclinometer and where we're hitting on the detector planes, it starts uh, you know, collecting a bunch of measurements. So we've captured data there and we've got some results. There's two screens. The, uh, the top screen is the vertical and the vertical tells us that we have a uh, gap at the top of 4.74 millimeters. Uh, we have uh, offset where the, the um, right hand machine is high on the left hand machine by 2.98 millimeters. And then looking in horizontal, which is the lower screen, we have 9.58 millimeters of gap, and we've got 7.48 millimeters of offset. Obviously, those are pretty big and ridiculous numbers, mm -hmm. uh, and it's just uh, because we haven't uh, done the original sort of setup of our uh, demo rig mm -hmm. uh, since we uh, had this thing constructed just uh, one working day previous. It also then gives us the information at the feet of how much we need to uh, sort of uh, adjust the drive end feet uh, that we need to come up uh, 10 millimeters and the non drive end feet uh, to come up uh, 14 point something millimeters and again looking at uh, horizontal uh, 21 millimeters and 31 millimeters. I've got a funny dimension in there somewhere. Uh, that we have to uh, move the machine across. Mm -hmm.